Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to a special video for Eve Echoes. In today's video I want to talk about the August update, what we reckon we know is coming to it and what this means for the game going forward. There is probably going to be a little bit of ranting here, I'll try to keep it as PG-13 as possible, but essentially what I want to talk about is what the anniversary update is likely to contain, what it's not likely to contain, because I've seen quite a few content creators getting very excited and looking at things from a very very awkward angle and just talk about what this kind of means for Echoes going forward. Could the third anniversary update finally be the one that fixes things for the game? Well, yes and no. It could be, but I really don't reckon it's going to be. But stick with me and I will explain why. I'm not here just to mindlessly bash, I'm here to talk about logic. I'm going to be talking about where the game is, where the games come from, and the general trajectory that netties have taken things in, and talk about this in terms of probability. Obviously, this is all my entire own opinion. You are welcome to have your own opinion, and I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. Talk to me. Give me what you think is going on. Just, you know, keep it clean. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know, hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you want to support the channel and go that extra mile to help keep me making content like this, you can head across to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, and my Redbubble merchandise store. So first things first then, sitting on screen here is an image, Cobalt Edge, coming on August 16th. That gives us a date, we think, for the anniversary. The anniversary for Eve Echoes is actually August 7th, I believe, but they've pushed it back a week to clearly get a bit more stuff in there, perhaps. And uh, there's a lot to cover in just this image alone. But before we get to this image, because there is some interesting stuff to talk about here, let's go across to Twitter, sorry, X, because who wouldn't want to keep Twitter's iconic branding and instead just replace it with literally the most generic thing ever? The, literally the thing that people sign when they don't want to use their actual name. Anyway, so Eve Echo's Twitter page. Pilots accidentally encountered a mysterious star region, Cobalt Edge. The area is home to endless fascinating minerals and terrifying monsters, making it a place where mystery and challenge coexist. Let's embark on this grand exploration journey on August 16th. It's notable that this was put up at 4pm. It is now, at the time of me making this, 7.30. There are no comments, because no one wants to comment on this. Let's look at things, first of all, from a bit of a fair point of view. What is Cobalt Edge? Well, if you play EVE Online, there is an entire region to the northeast of the galactic area, the, the cluster, so to speak, of New Eden, that has places like Cobalt Edge, Peregrin Falls, and um, a couple of other bits and pieces there as well, the Kavala Expanse. These in EVE Online are referred to as the Drone Regions, and there was a point in EVE history where essentially the Galente Federation decided to try and colonise these areas, opened it up, and suddenly ended up in a massive situation where they encountered rogue drones. Drones suddenly going sentient and attacking the pilots that were out there. A bit of an outcry when this first happened, because no empire was supposed to expand. One of the Concord Agreements, part of the Yule Conclave, was that no empire would expand beyond its current borders. So the Glente Federation kind of sneaking through a back door, trying to get a bit of extra space in this bit off to the side. Not a good look, Glente. Really, really not a good look. But they called upon the other empires who kind of went, yeah, that's what you get. You are not supposed to expand beyond your borders. Now you deal with it. Except that's not exactly what happened. They did send capsuleers and other factions in there. And Rogue Drones became a new NPC faction to go up against. And you do find those all over Highsec now. Because it turns out when you open up Stargates to an entire new region, it's not just letting you in, it's letting whatever's in out. Yeah. How cool is that lore, right? There's some really cool lore there that you've got all this mystery about the like what these rogue drones are, where they come from, what is running them. If you are familiar with the Eve Online uh, Sisters of Eden, uh, Sister, Sisters of Eve, Sisters of Eden, Sisters of Eve Epic Arc, you do actually fight a lot of rogue drones in that. You actually go to a rogue drone hive. You find a very special rogue drone that is building more rogue drones in high security space, and you handle that. 
it's really cool. There's a lot of thought and effort gone into it. There's a story as to why this region got opened up and what horrors lay inside it. So let's go back to Twitter. Pilots accidentally encountered a mysterious star region. This sounds like a white, it sounds like a husband who's just been caught cheating on his wife and it's like, oh, it was an accident. What, you just slipped and fell into her? You just accidentally fell through a random stargate into the Cobalt Edge region of space. And is it just Cobalt Edge? Because that seems really weird to open up just one bit of the drone regions when there are literally, I think, eight or nine different regions in there. I don't know. I just, this feels like gas mining all over again. Gas harvesting and EVE Online, really cool system, really unique materials, and it's a different thing to harvest. You know, you've got different modules, different skills, and even different ships that you use for it. Whereas when they added gas harvesting to EVE Echoes, it was, oh yeah, th those mining ships that you're already using to mine asteroids, it's the same ships and the same modules and the same skills. It's fine. Just, you know, don't don't think about it too hard. You're just gonna, it, it, it's not really gas. It's just a, you know, different color asteroid, really. It's pathetic. Pilots accidentally encountered a mysterious star region. Just slipped in one day like the Super Mario Brothers falling down a pipe in Brooklyn and emerged in the middle of a rogue drone hive. What are they thinking? You've got so much great lore to go on and these fucking morons just don't have a clue about any of it. It's why we get things like doves and hawks instead of the awesomeness that was the Society of Conscious Thought versus Guri Malakim in uh, Capsule of Day 20. Where in EVE Online, they took two of their favourite pirate factions and made them into a third sub-faction, where the Angel Cartel and the Guristus Pirates were teaming up to do research, and the Society of Conscious Thought were against them. That's cool, because you're working with factions that are established in the law, bringing them together and creating something new. You are developing already existing law. EVE Echoes doesn't have a freaking clue when it comes to that crap anymore, so they just kind of go, Man, what can we come up with? Oh, that's right, Concord is going to war. Literally, Concord was going to war. That's why we got those new missions where you could hand in different supplies and things. Concord, the peacekeeping organisation, going to war with a mysterious enemy. And now pilots are just accidentally encountering an entire freaking star region. Like, you know, whoops, oh, here we are. It just, it, it hurts. It genuinely hurts at this point in time that we have so much good lore available in New Eden, in the EVE Online universe, and netties are utterly unwilling to open a freaking book or a wiki. Like, there's no research going on, and that's key point. Key point about what worries me about the rest of this. But let's go to this image. So on August 16th, they are opening up Cobalt Edge. Not the drone regions, just Cobalt Edge. Now, looking around at the artwork that's on this, those do appear to be rogue drones, which is interesting because we've got sleepers in dormant realms now, rather than in wormholes, and now that they've been teasing that wormholes are coming, we're getting rogue drones. Okay, cool, whatever, I can kind of handle this. We've definitely got a drone hive there. We've got a load of uh, rogue drones flying around with some ships shooting at them. That in itself is pretty cool, right? You know, that's cool. Means we're probably getting rogue drones as an enemy faction. That would be really quite awesome if I weren't absolutely assured that there's going to be very little actually added for that. It's just going to be new stuff to shoot at. They're not going to have different AI. The loot's probably not going to be overly great. It'll be one of those things that, oh, everyone rushes to get the new loot and then suddenly it's immediately worthless, like with gas harvesting. Could this be really cool? Yeah, it could. I The fact that it's only Cobble Edge and not the entire drone regions gives me hope that they're essentially opening them up phase by phase and they're going to open up the entire drone regions gradually over time. I'm not sure I agree with that approach, but it certainly does address the possibility of certain large alliances. And yes, I know people will point a finger at Void on that one and go, oh, well, you know, just the big alliance is going to sweep in and take it all. Yeah, they probably will, but they can only get Cobble Edge to start with. So that's going to fill up really, really quickly, and then they'll open up maybe Peregrine Falls or the Kavala Expanse or whatever, and then that will fill up really quickly, because that's what happens when you drip-feed content like this rather than slapping it all out in one go. Sleepers could be cool, but I really don't think it's going to be different types of actual AI. It's just going to be the same basic crap PvE that we've been doing for the past three years, just with different-looking ships to fire at. It's not a great prospect when you look at it that way. 
But if you look closely at the picture, there is in the centre, just here on the right hand side, what appears to be an Avatar class Titan. That's pretty cool. Means we're getting Titans. We've been told that Titans were going to be coming around the anniversary. There were suggestions that Titans were actually going to be pushed back a bit and probably not come out directly in the anniversary. They'd probably be a month or so after. That may still be the case. We get Cobble Edge on August 16th and then the anniversary event happens over a period of weeks and or months, adding new regions um, to the drone regions and maybe adding like the, the Titans and that later on. I don't know what kind of loot we'd get for this, by the way. But also looking at this, there's been a couple of other bits and pieces. Sorry, I'm getting really close to the webcam here just to properly look at all of this. It's mainly rogue drones, mainly just rogue drones. Nothing else particularly exciting in there. I know a lot of people have been talking about, oh, they're going to be adding new ships. Yeah, they did tease to us in the CC chat that they might be adding a few new small ships. And because the image they used when talking about a lot of this stuff was the one of a Kaldari Navy hook bill with a fire tail and a couple of other bits around it going up against some Triglavian ships. There's a lot of people thinking, oh, we're getting Triglavians. I really don't think we are. I really doubt we'll get Triglavians in the August 16th update. It would be lovely to. I'd love to be flying a Damovic or a Kikimura or a Nergal or a Nikitursa or a Kik any of the different ships there. The Drekovac, uh, what was the other one I was going to say? It doesn't really matter. Um, the Cruiser one, I've completely lost the name, the Ikitursa, but not the one down from that. Yeah, I love the Triglavian ships. I think they're fantastic vessels, and it would be really cool to have those as auto mechanics. Set a Kiki in your pocket would be amazing. Yeah, it would. I just don't think it's coming. I really reckon that if we're getting any small ships, and that they are actually freaking small ships this time, not cruisers and battleships, that it's probably just going to be the Empire Frigates, so the Republic Fleet Firetail, the Imperial Navy Slicer, the Federation Navy Comet, and the Kaldari Navy Hookbill. If you're interested in any of those ships at all, I have done a video for the EVE Online Kaldari Navy Hookbill on the channel as well. You can search for that and have a look at it, and then you just check out the Firetail and stuff like that as well. I've not done videos on those, but they are cool ships that I do enjoy flying in EVE Online. Why do I enjoy flying them in EVE Online? Because there's actually content for them there. I don't think we're going to get content for them here. They've talked about, oh, we're going to be adding small ship content. I don't see it. I think they're adding small ships with those four. Maybe Rifter Assault at long last. I just don't see it happening. I really don't think that NetEase are actually going to be smart enough to bother adding that at this point. I reckon it's just the four uh, Navy issue frigates that are going to be coming out and there's no content for them anyway it's just pvp if you're a frigate pilot it's it's just pvp i've had a few people asking me recently oh can you i've just come back to eve echoes can you still like speed tank with small ships yeah you can in pvp in pve no there's really no content for you whatsoever Addressing a quick point here on a tangent because I'm sick and fucking tired of people misinterpreting my arguments. Sheev has done this recently. I should really do a video uh, like responding to his response to me um, where he points out that, oh, small ships, people keep asking for small ship content and I don't think that a battleship should be making the same amount of money as a frigate. No, neither do we. That's not what any of us have ever said, or at least none of us actually seriously working towards it. When it comes down to it, when we are asking for small ship content, we're saying, I want a reason to actually undock my small ship and have fun with it. I want to be able to dedicate myself to being a small ship pilot and not feel that I also need to have battleship skills just to make, you know, just to pay rent, basically, just to make the bills. In EVE Online, I can focus on being just a frigate pilot, and there is content that I can do that will allow me to earn ISK, to buy the frigates, to go out and PvP, and then lose them and replace them and go and do more PvE content. I can focus on being just a small ship pilot. You cannot do that in Echoes. You cannot do that in Echoes, because it's boring as all frick. And there's some really easy ways to, to fix this. I'm not suggesting that, you know, frigates should earn as much as battleships. I don't think they should. I think if you're a frigate main or a destroyer main, your costs are a lot lower than a battleship mains are. I just think there should be content that is exclusive to all classes of ships. So I think that if you are a frigate pilot, there should be content that you can do that other classes can't. That isn't, you know, so that not all PV, uh, PVE is just, oh, should have bought a battleship. Yeah, I can run Tech 10 Small Anomalies in a Thrasher 3 Interdictor. It's possible. I've showcased it. I've done it. But the entire time you're there, you're thinking, this would be so much better if I could bring a battleship. If you could exclude battleships from that content, suddenly it becomes fun. It becomes fun because you're not sitting there going, oh, I should just be doing this in a ship that is designed for it. This time around, you're doing it in the ship that it is designed for, and that's an awesome feeling. 
like in EVE Online, I was talking about Capture Lear Day 20 earlier, that Capture Lear Day 20 event, the event sites that you ran could only be run by battle cruisers and smaller. They knew that people would just grab marauders or battleships and go crazy in those. So they limited it to battle cruisers and below. When they did Faction Warfare, the new exploration and hacking sites that they added during Faction Warfare were exclusively available to Tech 1 ships. Couldn't bring a cheater or a buzzard into those. Tech 1 ships only. Basic probe, basic magnet, basic imicus, that kind of thing. It gives players something to actually do with the ships that they want to fly. It's not about the isk that's made, it's about the fact that it is something exclusively to you. And you might be thinking, well, hang on, Benzi, isn't EVE Online supposed, isn't, you know, inclus inclusivity better? No. If you make everything available to everyone, you end up with sandbox syndrome. That fact that oh, well, no one knows what to do, and ultimately there is still going to be a metaphor. When everyone can fly everything, they will fly one thing, because everyone can fly the best option, so why wouldn't they? Being exclusive in how you operate your content is vital, and it gives players satisfaction that their choices actually mean something, that I, as a frigate pilot or a destroyer pilot, as a cruiser pilot, have content that is available only to me whereas the battleships have content that is available exclusively to them. And if you say, well, what kind of content are we talking about there, Benzie? Really? Dormant Realms, for one, where there are plenty of different Dormant Realms that are basically four battleships run through. A battleship can run pretty much all of the Tech 10 combat sites. You can't really do that in a frigate. You can do a lot of things in battleships you can't do in frigates. And I'm talking PvE, not PvP. And yes, okay, you can say exploration is frigates only, but one, you know, exploration sucks, and two, I'm talking combat. I'm talking something that actually makes you money and gives you the opportunity. Like, why do we have combat frigates that no one uses? Why, why do we have those if we're not going to actually have content that makes them work? So PvP is a thing for frigates. Yeah, I get it. But I'd like PvE to be something that they do have exclusive options for as well. Same for cruisers, so on and so forth. So, Cobalt Edge coming August 16th to round this back onto the topic that I'm actually trying to cover. We also know that we are getting wormholes, and this should really excite me. Wormholes are cool. I live in wormholes in EVE Online. They're my favourite part of the EVE Online experience. Those coming to Echoes should be awesome, right? Yeah, except I've got no faith that NetEase is going to deliver it properly. Because... Once again, it's going to be one of those situations where NetEase turns around and goes, oh, we're going to add this to the game. What information and feedback can you give us? And they do that a month ahead of time, which means it's either going to be half-baked or it's going to be delayed or it's just not going to be properly done. It's going to be buggy as all hell. And I reckon half-baked is what we're going to go for here. It's going to be wormholes stripped right down to their very basic fundamentals. And it's not actually going to be anything like the wormhole experience in EVE Online. Now, I don't want it to be copy-pasted by any stretch. I maintain that the scanning minigame in EVE Echoes can be good fun. It's nowhere near as in-depth as the EVE Online one, and it has massive flaws and weaknesses to it. But if those have actually been addressed and you know dealt with, it could be interesting to do it in a different way. Wormholes? I don't see that. I think wormholes are just going to be this really half-baked idea that just doesn't end up working properly. I think that they are adding wormholes, they're going to be adding titans by the looks of things, and they're adding drone regions all in one update. And we've heard so little from the devs about this, and I'm talking about we as in the content creators here, that I just have no faith that any of it is going to be delivered properly. It's going to be rush job, it's going to be made by a team that have no understanding of what makes this content interesting or fun. And yeah, great. We're getting drone regions. It's going to be exciting, right? You've got new areas to explore and new ships to shoot at. Until you realise that when you're flying through space, it doesn't really matter whether you're flying through Jita or Enrail or wherever. If you're, you know, other than who is there, who is there is what matters. Whether you're in Delve or whether you're in Venal, it's just a skybox. The actual experience of jumping from station to station, gate to gate and so on, is identical throughout the entire game. So Cobble Edge is going to have a new skybox. Yeah, sure. That's going to get boring very, very quickly. The concept of fighting uh, the rogue drones is going to be really cool unless it turns out that they are basically just recolored ships, which is what I expect they're going to be. Have new exciting graphics, sure, but the gameplay is going to be exactly the same, which means you're going to get bored of it very, very quickly, because it's the same crap you've been doing for three years, which means the one thing that is there to be excited about from the sort of semi-confirmed is wormholes and titans. 
And Titans is just going to be ridiculous because look at what they did with carriers and then super carriers. Titans are just going to be flat out insanely good because that is how NetEase does things. Because imagine buying a Titan and then losing it. Like the first ever Titan created in EVE Online, the devs had to verify that it had been built correctly because they weren't sure players could actually build it in that time frame. But they verified that everything had been done without hacks and cheats and exploits. And very, very quickly, I think it took, a, like, you know, it took less time to destroy than it took to build. Guy lost it because he didn't log out properly. Failed to do a safe log out, got tackled, and then a fleet jumped in and finished him off. You'd never get that in Eve Echoes. You'd never get that. The concept that, oh, yeah, I lost my Titan. I was the first person to build a Titan. I spent a lot of real money on this, Netties. I'm disappointed. I want it back. Of course, they're just going to reimburse it. This is netties. They're terrified of upsetting the whales and anyone who's terrified of actual consequence in a game that's all about consequences mattering. Yeah, the Titans are going to suck the big one. They are just going to be bigger, better ships than every frickin' thing else. They are going to be, frankly, ludicrously expensive to build and fit. If you thought things like the Cyan Sea or the Supercarriers were eye-watering in their valuations, you wait till you see a Titan. It's about to get crazy. Yeah, and people are going to go, oh, it's new, exciting content. No, it's not. It's the same bullshit you've been doing the entire time. There's nothing new or exciting about it. It's not going to fix the market because the second they're built, oh, that's it, we're done. Woo. So, yeah, that leaves us with wormholes, which I, again, am absolutely certain at this point in time. I've tried reaching out to Cloud over and over and over again. I've had no responses back from him. I've tried giving him my wormhole PDF document that I'm working on from EVE Online. I've asked for his feedback and how it's all going. And I've basically been the equivalent of blue ticked. So, yeah, there's that. How much faith do you have, Benzie? Well, they're blue ticking the guy who is currently working his ass off to make wormholing much more exciting and accessible for players in EVE Online. Um, they're adding wormholes to EVE Echoes and they're just completely ignoring that guy who also happens to be one of the you know main content creators for EVE Echoes, or certainly used to be. Does that give me faith? No. It's not arrogance for me to say that, look, yeah, I've been covering this game for three years. I have more subscribers and had historically more views than any other content creator in this space. Doesn't mean I'm the best content creator, but I was certainly the loudest. And they just don't want to talk. They don't want to care. It's not important. Cloud asked for all this feedback, and I reckoned that a lot of that was just simple marketing. It was his way of subtly announcing that wormholes were coming without really announcing it as an official announcement yet. So, yeah, stay tuned to the Eve Echoes Twitter account. You're probably going to get an announcement that wormholes are coming soon, and it's going to be fantastic, and then it's really, really not. This image is cool. I'm not going to lie. It's cool. I like the rogue drones. I like the planet. I like all the stuff going on here. It just does nothing for me. And when they say pilots accidentally encountered a mysterious star region, it's like, really? You had such good lore to work with, and that's what you came up with. Mysteriously encountered a star region. Accidentally just fell through, you know, the looking glass into Wonderland. Yeah, that's where we are. And if that is the kind of effort and enthusiasm that they can put into the lore... What do you think is happening with the gameplay? The lore is the easy bit. Like, genuinely, this is an event that EVE Online has done historically. You could have easily just kind of gone, oh, yeah, let's, you know, let's copy their notes. No, NetEase won't do that. They've got the literal blueprint for how to run this as a successful game, and they're insisting on going, no, I will not learn from the people who have spent 20 years developing this game and making mistakes and then learning from it. I'm just going to make entirely new mistakes. Why? There's no good reason. It's just Netties wants to do things their way because they can't be fucked to just open up EVE Online. They're connected with CCP, but they just apparently don't want to talk to them. It's like, you know, I don't know. It, it feels like, uh, it feels like, you know, the, the, the husband and wife that have broken up and the kids are struggling, but neither of the parents want to talk to each other because oh, it's just too uncomfortable, you know? It's like a bad divorce at this point, really, isn't it? That's kind of what I'm getting at. And oof, that hits close to home right now. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I could be wrong about all of this. I really could be wrong about all of this, but pilots accidentally encountering a mysterious star region, the fact that we've got, like, less than a week, really, before all of this starts happening, and this is our first announcement, it's all such short notice, we as the content creators, despite the fact that, like, senior content creator on NetEase's own website, when you talk about the benefits and perks, that is our exclusive information from the devs. I didn't know about this until it hit Twitter. Literally didn't know about it until it hit Twitter. That was my first inkling that Cobalt Edge was coming in this update. 
I don't know if we're getting Titans. I don't even know if wormholes are definitely coming. I'm not going to know anything before you guys do, literally, and then I'm just going to make a video about stuff that you guys have probably already read, but maybe haven't, and, you know, I'm just going to give my thoughts and opinions on it, because that's literally all the content that can be squeezed out of this dry-ass fucking desert of a game at this point. Something that was once so juicy, verdant, and ripe for content has just become this barren wasteland of swipe your credit card and fingers crossed, you know, maybe the devs might do something interesting with this game at some point in the future. I've got no faith in this. No faith whatsoever. Cobble Edge could be cool, but it's not going to be because netties don't show the slightest bit of care and attention to their own game. Accidentally encountered a mysterious star region. That's the care and attention they've got to the backstory behind it. The easiest thing to write in the fucking world. And so what care and attention are they going to put behind the content? They're just going to copy and paste the rogue drone um, ships and animations and that's it. That's absolutely it. Like, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if Tessellas turn out just to be Rifters reskinned, Because that's how netties are. They're just lazy to the extreme. They want your money, but they're not going to give you actual meaningful content for it. New ships coming? Yeah, we've been told there's new small ships coming. I reckon they're the Navy issues. Are we getting Titans? They've hinted at Titans tons. They told us it was going to be August, but we've heard nothing about it, so God knows. But hey, there's a, you know an avatar there on the image. Your guess is as good as mine. I could be all wrong. I don't think I am. Anyway, folks, that's enough of me ranting and raving about this new announcement. If I get any more information about it, I will make more videos because I do still want this game to do well. I do. I just really don't think it's going to because it is absolutely clear to me right now that netties do not care in the slightest. Accidentally encountered a mysterious star region. Yeah... Like, I accidentally encountered this video. Oops. Happy sailing, folks, and see you in New Eden. If you accidentally log in.